Hi everyone, welcome to Cash Walks. In this Cash Walk, we're not uh, walking. <laughs> we're going to be listening to a presentation made specially for us by Jason Kim of the US National Coordination Office for Space-Based Positioning, Navigation and Timing. He very kindly made a presentation to help explain how GPS became available for the game of geocaching. Let's listen to the wonderful talk by Jason. Hi, I'm Jason Kim from the National Coordination Office for Space-Based Positioning, Navigation and Timing in Washington, D.C. Now that's a really long name for a government body that helps ensure GPS remains the global standard for satellite navigation. I've been asked to tell you about the selective availability feature of GPS, which was turned off in the year 2000. Hopefully you are aware that GPS is operated by the United States Department of Defense. The system was originally designed to meet military requirements for global mobility and warfare. But from the start, GPS has offered both a military service and a civilian service. The military service is encrypted and has other security features, but the civil service is broadcast openly as a public good. This openness is key to the widespread adoption of GPS, but it introduces risk that an adversary could try to use GPS against us. To protect national security, our Defense Department originally designed GPS with a feature called Selective Availability, or SA, that intentionally degraded the accuracy of the civilian GPS service on a global basis. When GPS was declared operational in the 1990s, SA was on and set to limit civil GPS to a horizontal accuracy of plus or minus 100 meters. So you could actually be an entire football field away from where GPS said you were. Now the air wasn't always that bad, it was closer to 25 meters most of the time. But since SA was basically random dithering, you could never really depend on GPS alone. Some clever engineers soon devised ways to circumvent SA to attain higher GPS accuracy. One major technique is called differential correction. The way it works is you set up a reference station that knows its own surveyed location to a very high degree of accuracy. Then that station listens to GPS and compares its reported position to the ground truth. The difference between the two can then be applied to other GPS receivers in the local area to cancel out the errors introduced by SA. This technique quickly became popular to the point that the U.S. Department of Transportation fielded not one but two differential correction networks to support air and maritime navigation. So we had a situation where one agency of our government was introducing errors into GPS while another agency was spending taxpayer money to take it out. Differential correction also took off in other countries around the world, thus undermining the security rationale behind SA. In 1996, the first presidential GPS policy declared GPS to be a dual-use system and gave it a joint civil-military executive board. That policy also required DOD to end the use of selective availability within a decade, with the president making an annual determination starting in 2000 on its continued use. In 1999, the Pentagon prepared for the first determination in coordination with the other agencies on that GPS executive board. On behalf of the Commerce Department, I actually helped collect inputs from the civilian world on whether to leave SA on or off. And as you can imagine, the responses were overwhelmingly in favor of ending SA. People were frustrated by their inability to trust and rely on GPS. Uh, at the same time, Europe had just announced Galileo as what was initially going to be a competitor to GPS. So by early 2000, it was clear that the justification for keeping SA on was weak and that the military could mitigate hostile use of GPS through other more surgical methods without unduly disrupting or degrading civ civilian uses. Furthermore, we predicted that without SA, GPS would deliver huge new civilian and commercial benefits to the nation and the world. At the end of April 2000, the Secretary of Defense submitted his recommendation to the President that selective availability be discontinued immediately. With the President's concurrence, the Air Force sent commands to each satellite in the GPS constellation, programming them to simultaneously set SA to zero at midnight UTC at the end of May 1st, 2000. The White House announced the SA decision on May 1st, and literally overnight, 
the accuracy of civil GPS leaped tenfold. That one change opened the floodgates for GPS usage. The, G the global market for GPS goods and services surged from $8 billion in 2000 to over $170 billion in 2019. The Commerce Department estimates that, since, that the use of GPS since its inception has resulted in over $1.4 trillion in economic benefits, with about 99% of those coming after 2000. We're talking about productivity benefits from precision farming, time and fuel savings for motorists and truckers, and even the value of lives saved from fast response to emergency E911 calls. And of course, geocaching was one of the first new uses of GPS invented after SA went away. According to internet lore, geocaching was, ac was actually conceived as a celebration of the demise of SA just two days after its deactivation. Geocaching is one of hundreds of new GPS applications that we could not even imagine when we sent the SA decision package to the White House. We certainly couldn't imagine a device like this loaded with dozens of location-based apps. 20 years later, I can assure you that the United States has no intent to ever use selective availability again. The decision in 2000 was an enduring one that has not been revisited even during America's worst crises, not even after the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Reactivating SA would do nothing but inflict massive economic harm to ourselves and to our allies. To make the decision permanent, the Pentagon announced in 2007 that the new GPS-3 satellites would be built without any SA capability whatsoever. GPS-3 is launching right now, so soon it will be completely impossible to bring back SA. To learn more about selective availability, I invite you to visit our official website, gps.gov, which is a wealth of information about GPS and related topics. Thank you for listening. I hope this was informative and happy geocaching. Thanks, Jason, for the interesting talk. And don't forget to go geocaching, everyone.